I'll listen in on that. Can you hold up? All right, bye. Uh, the CEO of BP has stated that they expect to exceed the liability cap of $75 million. And when I said, will you be responsible for the economic damages, he said, that is something that we will have to work out in the future. I said, are you uh, going to be uh, going after Transocean, which manufactured this blowout uh, preventer? And he said, that is something that we will have to work out with them in the future. Uh, so I think what you see, it's another reason of why we should increase in the legislation that's been filed last night, the liability caps from 75 million up to 10 billion over and above what is paid in the actual cleanup cost. Uh, I ask him uh, what was the chance that this dome that they're going to attempt to lower, he says it's never been done before in 5,000 feet of water that it's always been done successfully in about three or 400 feet of water. And so there are all kinds of pressure things, all kinds of questions of the coming up the, uh, the pipe, uh, gas and sand and water and oil, and how you process that all in the ship on the surface. So I said, well, beyond that, uh, are we talking about what Admiral Allen has said, that this is, uh, this is a three-month operation, although they're already down with a relief well 6,000 feet down to the depth of 13,000 feet under the seabed. But the rest of the going is much harder, much slower, much more rock. So I said, are we looking at uh, three months? And that's the acknowledged time frame. I said, do you realize that hurricane season starts June the 1st? That's three weeks away. And do you realize that historically, hurricanes will start up in the Gulf of Mexico? He said, we are well aware of that. I said, um, Tell me about this uh, Times of London report uh, that occurred uh, over the weekend in which in the year 2000, BP knew there was a problem with the trans-ocean uh, blowout preventer safety devices and issued a notice of default. He said that did occur. And I said, well, what happened? He said, we worked it out. I said, well, if I were Transocean, I'd be uh, worried that they were put on notice uh, by you, but that you also knew of a potential defect 10 years ago. So I asked him about the acoustic systems. He said, it, Acoustic systems are not expected to be reliable at these kind of depths. That's why they did not have it on. They had three uh, safety mechanisms. They had the one of which you flip the switch on the surface of the ocean. I asked him, was that uh, switch flipped? And he said, yes, there was evidence by the guys that were killed that it was flipped, but it was also flipped on the bridge where the guys that were rescued, they actually flipped the switch. That was to cause those metal plates to come together like pistons to shut off the well. That did not work. So the second backup uh, was to be the pressure that would automatically close called the dead man if the, if the systems go without transmission of power, they automatically shut off the outflow. That did not work. The third safety mechanism is the robot submersibles that are down there 
that are in effect pumping handles that are hydraulic handles to shove those plates together. He says they've been pumping them to shove them together, but it hasn't cut off the flow. So we are where we are now with the attempt to get this dome 5,000 feet below uh, into a position and see if they can contain, but there's a lot of undeterminables that this has never uh, been done before. I asked him, well, why keep exploring? Have you stopped exploration? until, uh, as I have asked the uh, Department of Interior to stop expo exploration until we get to the bottom of this in the investigation. He said, we have stopped exploration in the Gulf of Mexico. I said, have you stopped exploration elsewhere in the world? He said, no, just in the Gulf of Mexico, which is where they're drilling. I said, what about the cement? Uh, there's a question of defective cement. Uh, he said, uh, we don't know the answer to that. I said, uh, who uh, did the cement for you? He said, Halliburton. I said, did Halliburton do the cement on the defective well off the north coast of Australia that blew? He said, uh, I do not know the answer to that, is what he said. And I said, uh, what kind of assurance can you give to our people that this is not going to have a, a, another rig a blow? And he said, that's why uh, we have stopped the other exploration rigs. But his answer basically was that statistically, the chance of failure is so minimal that it is his answer unlikely that this was going to occur in the future. And uh, I explained to him that uh, he well knew my position of wanting to keep rigs off of uh, Florida and out of the military testing area. And uh, he had a very curious answer to this question. I said, Ken Salazar's own statistics show that of the undiscovered oil in the Gulf, 90% of that undiscovered oil is to the west of the area that I have off limits in statute, and only 10% of the undiscovered oil is in the eastern Gulf. So I ask him, why is it to you worth the trade-off to Florida's economy in both its tourism and fisheries, as well as the trade-off to the military testing and training range, that you should drill only in a place where there is expected 10% of the oil? He says because 10% of an oil fine is a lot of oil. And I said, but why don't you believe like Willie Sutton, who when asked, why does he rob banks? He said, because that's where the money is. Why aren't you drilling where 90% of the oil is instead of going out and having potential huge economic liability? because of the cost of economic uh, downturn off of Florida and the military. And he said, uh, well, at that point, I don't think he had an answer for that. Are you